Does it throttle? Yes, yes it does. Is it going to affect your work? Maybe. I'm talking about the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 processor in general. And the reason behind today's test is to see two things. One is we're gonna compare the speeds of these and two, is throttling really that bad? Is it going to affect it in a really adverse way that we won't be able to work with the machine? And that's what I wanna try and answer today with these tests. I got the MacBook Air. This is the Intel variety with a Core i5 from 2017. You can see how different it looks than the other ones. And this one actually has a fan in it. So that might help it out a little bit. These three models are fanless. We've got the two M1 processor MacBook Airs here. The difference is that this is the base model. This one has 256 SSD in it and uh, eight gigabytes of RAM. This one has a 512 SSD with 16 gigs of RAM. So we'll see the difference there as well. And this is the M2 base model, eight gigs of RAM, 256 single chip NAND. So we've seen that the disk access writes and reads are actually about two times slower than on these M1s. I have a separate video testing that for software developers. Now we're gonna do the CPU bound test, nothing to do with SSD, a little bit to do with SSD, but not much. Check out that other video. All right, now I've cloned the Xcode benchmark and the WebKit repositories on both of these. We're gonna start off with the Xcode benchmark, which is going to execute an Xcode build. We're all in the same version of Xcode here, 13.4.1, and I've just rebooted all these machines to begin the test. To run it, I just issue a shell command. Max Yurimenko, the guy that wrote this test, by the way, he was nice enough to include a nice easy shell script so I don't have to write out the Xcode command. Thanks, Max. I'll link to his repo down below as well as the WebKit one. Now there's only one unfortunate thing and it's that the Schwarzenegger only has three fingers and not four. I'm gonna maybe have to work on that. But that's okay, I got another finger that I can use to press an extra button there. And also it's not much of a race for that Intel one. That one is, let's just say it's not really in the race. It's in a different race, a race of its own. And let's go. <laughs> Did I actually do it? I actually pressed them all at the same time. Amazing. <laughs> well, let's see what happens here. Now, while this is running, I wanna pay attention to the temperatures and right away you'll see that the m2 is already approaching 100 degrees it's at 100 while these two are just getting warmed up and the intel box did hit uh, the high 90s but it quickly cooled down once the fan kicked in this one is at 108 degrees the m2 which seems to be where apple engineers decided that they will put a limit it's not going to let it go above 108 degrees you know apple engineers are smart people they've done extensive research and they've had lots of years of experience enough to say that okay 100 eight degrees this time around we think that this laptop can handle it so there's been a lot of noise about it going that high but it's fine like that little drawing with a little dog in the house this is fine if you do hear any noise that intel macbook air is pretty loud right now the fans are at 4,000 rpm i've seen them get up to upwards of 5,000. and we have a finisher guess what the macbook air m2 finished first everyone else is still working at it and the surprise here is that the m1 the base model actually finished this test before the 16 gigabyte model it's close so we're still waiting for the intel box but here are the numbers so far in third place we've got the 16 gigabyte m1 macbook air with 148 seconds Next is the M1 MacBook Air with 8 gigabytes, 145 seconds for that one. And with 130 seconds, we've got the M2 MacBook Air. While we're waiting for that Intel box to finish, I want to do one more thing here. I want to run this same test one more time, but I want to show you something else. I want to open up a new tab here. And this program called Top. it's a Python package. It's a, basically a visualizer for power metrics. Power metrics is a utility that comes with Mac Mac OS that allows you to view what's going on with a computer right at that given moment. And Azitop actually visualizes it. So this one is telling us directly if it's throttling or not. So right now, these three machines are sitting there not doing anything. Nice, cool 41 degrees here, 42 here, and 38 over there, and none of them are throttling. So I'll pop open our previous tab for Xcode benchmark and run that one more time while we're observing Azitop. So we know it takes about two minutes or two and a half minutes to run this test. And I'm gonna look at the throttling section here to see what's happening. Now you can see a little chart and a visualizer that's rolling through. And you can also see the CPU usage. 
at the top with the power cores and the efficiency cores and what megahertz they're running at. And when one starts to throttle, the megahertz actually fall and you'll be able to see that right away. So here on the M2 specifically, the megahertz on the power cores are above 3000. All right, we're reaching at 101 degrees, now at 108 on the M2. So we should see signs of throttling pretty soon. And if this doesn't do it, my next test will. <laughs> All right, it looks like it finished. I'm gonna kick it off one more time while we're still warm. Here we go, folks, look at this. We got no throttling, no throttling, and yes throttling over here on the M2. So yes, it does throttle the processor, the CPU at some point during this process. So this goes to show you if your build is maybe a few minutes longer than two minutes, you're gonna see some throttling going on. But what does that mean? Does that mean that this particular build is going to be slower than the ones on the M1? I don't know, let's find out. How much slower can it be? Well, it still says throttling, so I'm gonna run this one more time. Actually, that one finished in 128 seconds, which is faster than our first one. So I'm gonna run it one more time while it's throttling the whole time, and we should see some difference in the speed, shouldn't we? If these two finish, I'm gonna restart them again just so that we have continuous building going on to simulate a longer process. And yes, I'm doing the longer build later, but this is this is more like um, constant rebuilding like you might do during your workday. Whereas the WebKit build, probably people did it either on a server somewhere or they did it overnight or over lunch break if they had a three hour lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are continuously throttling on the M2, yet the PCPU usage is still above 3000 megahertz. And of course, we're not throttling at all on the two M1 MacBook Airs. <laughs> <laughs> so we are finished and during that last build on the M2 the CPU was continuously being throttled and the result is that we have 129 seconds for that build faster than the freshly rebooted machine which was 130 seconds and by the way this is a complete rebuild in case you're wondering the shell script handles cleaning. Um, if this kind of workflow matches what you're doing, then this is more representative of what results you'll see. However, make sure you do your own testing and your own research for your type of projects. Okay, now I am seeing some slowdowns in the two M1 machines where I'm building the same project over and over again. And this is 156 now on the base model, 154 on the 16 gigabyte model. Yet we're seeing the same speeds or even faster speeds with the throttling on the M2. So that M2 chip is actually quite a bit faster. We're seeing that throttling is not really playing a huge role here. As a side note, the i5 is still doing its thing. Oh, now it's done. This is its first run and it's finished. And that took 1059 seconds. Yeah. All right. Next, I'm going to build WebKit. And this one is going to take a while. And for this one, I don't have a handy script. So I do have to use the scripts that they included, including cleaning. So I make sure that I clean this every single run and then I do a build. And I have to include my own time command because, well, that's not included as an output. Time, and then we go to tools. These are the included scripts that come with WebKit. And I run the script, build WebKit. We'll do the debug build. It doesn't really matter. Although I am kind of curious, you know what? Let me try the release build this time instead. Yeah, I'm gonna do the release build. It's not so much for the Apple Silicon machines in this race, but more because of the Intel machine. If I issue the debug flag, it might not use the full optimization and therefore it'll be dependent on the compiler, the platform, which is slightly different on the Intel machines than it is on the Apple Silicon machines. So I'm gonna use the release flag this time. My Intel box is still cleaning but I'm running out of patience. I'll have to run that one manually. Plus I already have some times for that one. All right, I'm ready for the Apple Silicon race. Are you? Schwarzenegger's ready. And let's go. <laughs> I'll be back when this is done. Now, while it's building, I just wanted to quickly say that these two machines are not throttling again, and this one is throttling. So we'll see an effect of throttling on a long-term build. And the way this build works is a little bit different than the Xcode benchmark test, is this one kind of works in stages. So the temperature is allowed to drop. Right now, we're at 79, 80 degrees on the M2, and then it ramps up to 108, drops down, ramps up that's the pattern so the cpu is not in constant use yet the throttling flag is constantly on so we will see how that affects long-term build 
Oh, I just noticed this flag on the uh, M1 MacBook Air also switched to throttling just now. And we're probably about five minutes into the build. I'm guessing the base model will also switch to throttling pretty soon. And for those of you that are curious, on the Intel model, you can also tell if it's throttling or not. There's a command you can give it, PM set dash G therm log. And it's not as pretty as this one. This one's made for Apple Silicon specifically, ASCII top. That one just spits out the total CPU at 100 and the CPU speed limit, if it's less than 100, is throttling. So we'll keep an eye on that. And now the M1 base model is also throttling. So we're all throttling, having a good old time here. Perhaps if you want to build such a huge project on a MacBook Air, that's what you got to deal with. If you're on a Mac Studio, maybe you won't run into this situation. All right, folks, I'm back after an hour or so, and we got some numbers here. Of course, the Intel box, we're going to be waiting for a while for that one. So I just wanted to review these numbers with you. Now, out of Apple Silicon machines, in third place, we've got the M1 MacBook Air. Which one? The base model. That one comes in at 50 minutes and 45 seconds, 5045. Next, surprisingly, is the M2 at 48 minutes and 30 seconds. Now, both of these have 8 gigabytes of RAM. So the M2 is faster, but not by much doing this long test. And we might be bound by memory here because the 16 gigabyte model finished first. And that's the M1 MacBook Air 16 gigabyte model finishing at 41 minutes and 45 seconds. Now, just to put all this into perspective here, I have run this test before and I'll link a video down below on the M1 Max MacBook Pro as well as the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. And the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip and 64 gigs of RAM finishes this build in 10 minutes while the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max finishes it in 16 minutes. This is a multi-core build. That makes perfect sense because those machines have more cores. And the MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio both have active cooling. They have fans inside. So that really helps the processor keep going even under such high loads. So does throttling the CPU hurt our overall performance here during this long build and it looks like yes it does these machines have eight core CPUs while the M1 Max has 10 cores so that's only a two core difference but we're talking about two and a half to three times longer builds on the MacBook Airs which all were throttling at different rates now the Intel machine that's here just for fun and just for show really is also throttling you can see from the speed limit it's falling below 100 to 89 93 89 93 96 but it doesn't really matter because that'll take about three and a half hours to finish that particular build and i'm not gonna sit here and make you watch that but i did run that recently on that machine so there's the numbers for you and you have an answer hopefully this will help you out in your decision it really depends what kind of build you're doing whether this issue of throttling will affect you or not if you had a problem with throttling on the m1 macbook air then the throttling issues will still be there on the M2. And it might be the case that if you are building such huge builds, you're not even using a MacBook Air anyway. So is throttling an issue? Yes, it is, but it's probably a finite issue limited to only a certain set of people that need to do huge builds and they happen to have a MacBook Air that they're doing it on. But it's not gonna be an M2 only issue. It's a MacBook Air issue. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more things like this. Thanks for watching folks. And I will see you in the next video.